So in front of me we have a Photinia and what you'll see to the left of me is a patch of ferns which I don't want to target. On the right hand side we have Koa. Now Koa I know is resistant to the Amazapir so what I'll try to do is cheat over more towards the Koa. In case we do hit Koa we know that the herbicide won't affect it. So but our main focus is to try to hit the Photinia. Safety is off. Here we have Jason Hanley targeting a Photinia easily from 60 feet away. Oh, look at that. Got beautiful break of the ball, excellent coverage. So here we are back at the site of an HBT application to Photinia where we're at 60 days after application and we're starting to finally see symptomology of the herbicide taking effect. Now what you'll notice is that there's still green foliar tissues on this plant, but it's important to recognize that the green tissues remaining on the plant are mature leaves. Whereas if we were to take a closer look, we would notice that a lot of the young apical tips have burned off, suggesting that the herbicide is starting to take effect. Now this is an early time period for herbicide symptoms to show up with Amazapir. So we're looking forward to seeing how uh, the activity of this herbicide progresses at 120 days or even over 200 days. So here we're at a little closer view of the Photinia that was applied with HBT. And again, with the symptoms that we're seeing now early on are the apical growing points showing necrosis. Now for Photinia, these apical growing points are the flowers and the fruit set. And so we have some fruit set on the plant still, but a majority of them are dead and non-viable. What the other value of HBT in this case was the accuracy in our directed application where you can see the herbicide was applied to Photinia with virtually no uh, non-target injury to our native ferns. In fact, what you'll see around these, the Kikuyu grass where the application was made, we have some non-target injury to the Kikuyu grass about within one meter of the Photinia. And so again, we're at 60 days after application, and we'll continue to monitor the progress of these symptoms at 120 and upwards to 200 days to see how uh, this continues. Here we have a perfect example of early symptoms that we'll often see with the use of amazapir. Amazapir is highly systemic and tends to move from source to sink. In this case with the Photinia, the sinks were the flowers and the fruit sets. And so here's an example of complete necrosis of that. And when we venture along the stem at a more distal uh, position, we'll see how the plant tried to force new foliar tissues. But again, notice some of the necrosis on the, on the leaves, uh, suggesting that the herbicide is still taking effect. So here we are on a return visit back to the site where Jason Hanley applied HBT to this Photinia that's in between two Ohias. And what we're noticing is that early symptoms of the Amazapir is having an effect on the Photinia, but we observe no collateral damage to the adjacent Ohias. With a closer look at this Photinia, we're noticing very little fruit set on this plant, suggesting an effective dose. Here we have an untreated Photinia with a heavy fruit set. So here's what the, the capsule looks like. And what you'll notice, and what I really like about these balls, is that we have a gel cap that's sealing the herbicide. Unlike the liquid herbicides that we're used to dealing with where there's a lot of mess and whatnot, because these are still in the developmental stage, I still wear gloves, I still wear PPE, just because it's the right thing to do. But I really like the idea of the safer handling of this dry formulation. I think it makes it more convenient in this type of environment where we have uh, not, at, no access to water, uh, for cleanup, so this is a, a better, safer approach to herbicide applications and invasive weed management.